Kia ora koutou. My name is Alex and I'm, uh, I've been studying computer science and politics, philosophy and economics for the past three years. And I'm here to tell you why the internet is not and should not just be cat videos. Uh, more specifically, this talk is about how and why we would want and why we need to equip the children of the Instagram age to be more than just consumers of content in a digital world. But first, I'm here to about talk about some forces. So the first force I want to flag with you today is the force of globalisation. Behind me we've got two pictures of some factories. One of them is in Dunedin and the second one is in China. The thing they have in common, probably the only thing they have in common, is that they both produce trains. Now my question for you today is how are we ever going to compete and provide jobs for people in the world of manufacturing when we don't have comparative advantage? And I'm sort of begging the question here because the answer is no. No, we can't provide jobs for people and no, we can't uh, compete in the world of manufacturing when we simply don't have the scale, the capacity, the technology, the capital to produce things like these. What's the effect of this? Well, what we're seeing is that people lose their jobs and that's bad. But what's worse is that when people lose their jobs, they lose part of them their sense of identity. These places were like parts of the community which formed people's identity and where entire families worked. And we think that that's a really bad thing. So what are we going to do about it? Well, second thing I want to flag with you is another force. There's force B, the force of automation. Over the past 50 years in manufacturing and agriculture, we've seen that automation has uh, changed the way that people work and ultimately it's probably reduced the number of jobs that are out there for people. This has meant that we can all consume more and that's really great, but it also puts swathes of people out of work, ripping apart their identities, their livelihoods, their ability to provide for their families, and that can be a really bad thing as well. What do we know about globalisation and automation? It's difficult to fight. We're never going to shut off the flow of goods from the outside world. People win and lose, Overall, we've all gained from globalisation. But uh, for places like Dunedin, it's been a really bad thing. We've seen hundreds of, of, of companies marginalised and shrinking um, as a result of having to compete with the outside world, and that's been really tough. Another sort of thing we're seeing is the digital divide. Throughout South Dunedin, Caversham and Crawlstorfen, uh, we've seen that there's a low uptake of internet in households. We've also seen that there's a, a, a low uptake of devices in households. Um, so often, often uh, children will have a computer in their home, but they won't have access to the internet. Or they might have, uh, you know, their parents might have a cell phone, but they don't have a computer that they can do their homework on. And this is really, um, really tricky for, for children who live in a digital age and whose jobs are probably going to be based around computers. These two things are feeding into uh, the, the fact that Dunedin ha in particular has one of the worst uh, youth um, unemployment rates in the country. There's three reasons for this and I I've touched on the first um, which is that the jobs simply aren't there. Because of globalisation um, we're seeing that there no longer are those manufacturing jobs you can go to after you leave school. Um, you've got to go into training or, or look elsewhere for a job. It's a lot harder than it used to be. The second facet of this uh, youth unemployment dilemma is that we're seeing that there's a large number of students around um, who suck up all the part-time work. The third uh, facet is that we've failed to inspire and equip a generation of students to make use of the internet um, and to inspire them to maybe take up the mantle of uh, getting a career in that area. We're seeing as part of the digital divide that the, the rise of tablets um, is really removing people from being uh, consumers, uh, producers in their digital destiny. It's a closed off ecosystem, it's not customizable. We see that you just consume information through this tablet and you're, you're not able to download applications or create your own applications without the approval of some third party and I think that's really wrong. This used to be how computers worked, um, where you could fiddle with them and create your own programs and now we see that we're turning into pretty much vegetables and I think that's a really sad thing. 
The next thing I want to talk about is our national identity. Um, you can probably tell from this slide, we've got pavlova, we've got um, cows. But why shouldn't the practice of making and doing with technology be part of our national identity? Why, do we, why are we um, settling for uh, things which, you know, like great things, but why aren't we adding this to um, our national identity? And I think part of the answer is we are. Recently, um, digital technology was added to the school curriculum, and that's a really great thing. But it's not going to be implemented for several years. Um, so what are we going to do about it today? Well, there's a number of, uh, of solutions which I think um, are really promising. We need to get back to basics. We need to give to the tools of uh, creation to children um, and facilitate them to experiment with those. And that's why uh, I got involved in a space which does just that. Um, we started with 12 computers from a skip at the uni and um, some tables, which we got for almost free. And it was in that old industrial space, which no longer provided employment to the community. So that was kind of a cute tie-in. Um, so where do we go from here? Well, once we've created this practice of making and doing in these spaces, in our community, where we allow people from industry and people from academia to help kids to develop their passions with technology and to produce rather than consume, I'm hoping that some of them will go on to do just that. We're already seeing a critical mass of technological innovation in places like Dunedin. It's just a short list of the companies that, um, that have started up here or have actually moved here because of that um, critical mass that we're seeing. So in order to uh, build the future, what I'm saying is we just need to start. Thanks for listening.